if you're like me and you're starting to archive more and more data to the cloud, that way it's archived in the cloud, and you're using AWS S3, you'll want to make sure you're taking advantage of lifecycle rules. You'll want to make sure that you're intelligently having your storage moved to deeper archives within AWS that charge you a lot less for that bulk storage. Let's face it, while I want to save copies of all of the training videos I ever make, I don't necessarily go back and pull out ones from 1997 or 1998 all that often, even though they are in the archive. So let's spend very little to keep track of that type of old data. Let's show you just how easy this is to do in AWS in this video. So yeah, if you're like me, you're gonna end up with this bucket of stuff. It's just stuff that I dump up here, and this is very much an archive. Now, if you go to the properties of your AWS S3 bucket, notice if you scroll down, there is this intelligent tiering archive configuration. Now, notice I have one in place that is called test. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because I really am interested in creating a new intelligent tiering archive configuration that is more aggressive than that initial test one that I set up for this bucket. Now I do realize that this bucket really is a place where I want to kind of aggressively archive this stuff because it really is acting like an archive for me. I keep things local for an appropriate period of time, right? And then once it's quite clear that I'm not going to need these things, I want to archive them up here. So I'm going to go in and choose create new configuration. Notice we're going to give this configuration a name. I'll say my latest policy because I'm clever with names like that. And do we want to limit the scope of this configuration? No. I want this to apply to absolutely everything that goes into this bucket. And I want the uh, configuration to be enabled for sure. And I want to call upon the archive access tier. And I want this to be hit after, oh, let's say seven days. And I want to do a deep archive access tier after 30 days. So there we go. And notice that I'm going to create this policy, whoop, and it must be greater than or equal to 90. Oh, wow. So we have to do 90 here. That's as aggressive as we can be. And this has to be uh, 180. All right, well, will be as aggressive as we possibly can be with our intelligent tiering archive configuration. Well, here's the good news. This is just for that intelligent tiering archive of storage. Watch this. If you go under management, we have lifecycle rules. And if we create a lifecycle rule, I'll do my new rule and we apply it to all objects in our bucket and we acknowledge what we're about to do, we can then say we wanna move current versions of objects between storage classes and we can say, uh, I want to go ahead and do a storage class transition where we're gonna move things into the Glacier Deep Archive after, oh, let's say 14 days. So notice I have to acknowledge that I want this to happen and then I'm going to go ahead and create the rule and there we go. So now we have a life cycle rule that says, hey, look, new versions of objects created in this bucket can transition to the Glacier Deep Archive 14 days, I th believe I said it to, which is nice and aggressive, just what I want, into the Glacier Deep Archive for these objects. So these are powerful ways to have AWS working behind the scenes, helping us save money 
on stuff we want archived up to the cloud. Thank <laughs> you.